Okay. So we are in module five and we've already begun looking at the scripture lecture for 5A. Uh, and that's where we left off last time uh, where we had um, split these. Oops, let's see, there it is, okay. Uh, where we had split these, split the window. Um, and when you split a window, it allows you to literally have like two versions of it at a time. So you could see multiple parts of the, at the window of the window at once. Uh, you can even see the same lines if you want to. So like 123 here and it's also up here. So we can see everything. Uh, okay, and so we left off on objective two and the last thing I needed to do at this point in time was to remove the split. So to remove the split, what I'm gonna do is I am going to go to view, the view tab, and I try to get rid of stuff that's <laughs> hovering over it because um, of WebEx. But I'm going to uh, click on split, which is should be up oh, one above this guy. I can't see it yet because the sharing information is hovering over my stuff. There, oops, nope. It went away. Go away. Please go away. Okay, let's try this again. Hey, I know I'm sharing. Thank you. Go away. There we go. All right. Um, split. So uh, that's how you can remove it. You just click on it and it's gone. All right. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at some. Um, well, we've done this honestly before, but uh, we've looked at themes and um, and cell styles before. Um, so we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to do a little bit more advanced. We're going to uh, see how we can enhance our themes and styles a little bit. So uh, first thing we're going to do is uh, I'm going to go to the beginning of this of the of this sheet by hitting Control A. I'm sorry, Control uh, Home, which will take you back to A1. And then um, let's add a sort of heading above this because right now, right now it's very clear that we have our column headers like they're even bold, and then we have a lot of data underneath. And we even did some kind of totaling at the bottom, right, for all the ones that um, that had staff. Um, and some of you might. I have a question. Yes. I tried to do like the highlights, and then when I I did the highlights, only highlight uh, one cell. Don't highlight the the another Not cell. Two? No. Okay. I don't know why, but I did. The, you know, I go back and did, do I highlight it, but. So so when you did it initially, you went to uh, on the home tab, and it, so the question is about the uh, blank cells and highlighting yeah. them. Yeah. So, so uh, what you can do is select them all at once by using find and select. So if I click find and select and then go to special. I did I can, that. Right. So I'm, I'm just uh, just just uh, showing it just to give an example. When you click mm -hmm. blanks, it actually will select all of them. Now, sometimes people will accidentally at that point then like, oh, there it is and click it. If you do that, it unselects the other one. So once you do the go to special and do the blanks. Mm -hmm you need to immediately go and select your background color change. Because otherwise, if you click anywhere else, it only will have that one thing selected. Oh, so I'm, okay. Yeah. So I'm assuming that that's, that's what happened. That's why I deselected the other one, because you mm -hmm. you went and clicked on it. Um, so you just have to be careful with that. I, I, I honestly, I do that all the time. Um, I'm like, crap, and I'll, like, I'll undo and redo it, even though in my mind, I'm like, well, I probably could have just left the one I just fixed finally. But um, mm -hmm. I like to do it all at once. So. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, all right, so, so yeah, we have we have all this data. We do have those blanks, so those, those should should have got take, should get taken care of at some point. Um, not not by us, but by whoever is actually using the scheduler. So what we're gonna do is uh, let's gonna let's insert above this guy a new row. So that way we have something to kind of title this. And so what I'm gonna title this is gonna be uh. Schedule of classes uh, 
with unassigned time. And what we're going to do with that is what we're used to. This is going to be our title of our worksheet. So I'm going to um, select all the cells above the majority of our data. And I'm going to do merge and center so that it seems more like a title. Then to make it even more like a title, I'm going to uh, change the title style to title. Or sorry, the cell style to title. Uh, so again, stuff that you're used to. Um, now let's give this. Let's give our worksheet a theme. I guess technically the workbook, but let's give the worksheet a theme. So I'm going to go to the page layout tab. I'm going to go to the themes group. I know it's a themes group again because um, it says themes here um, in the bottom. All the group names are on the bottom. And then under theme, I'm going to select ion. If you're ever wondering which one you currently have selected, because sometimes it's kind of hard to tell when you go in here because you don't see something that has a border around it. Uh, what I do is I usually just hover over this. The screen tilt will tell you what the current theme is. Notice it says current office theme. So if you're ever wondering, like, did I already select it? I think I did. This is how you can check to make sure. And this is what I do to check. I've had many times people tell me, oh, I totally got uh, selected the theme. I know I did. And maybe they they're sh maybe they thought they did, but they didn't, or they didn't in the version that they sent uh, submitted. This is how I always check. And I'm gonna select Ion. Uh, notice that things get a, got a, lot, a little bigger. Um, the fonts change a little bit as well. So we select the theme, everything um, regards to fonts, colors, effects, all that stuff changes. Um, and so you just want to be aware of that. However, you can also customize these um, so you can change those things to in your customization, like the colors here, fonts, and effects, which you all have had experience with at some point in this class now because you've has been one of the objectives that you've we've covered so far. So um, speaking of which, let's just go to the fonts. I'm going to hover over it. If I look at it right now, notice it says current ion. I'm going to change these back to office, back to what they were. So the theme is still ion, but the fonts, which were in an ion style, we changed to be a office. Okay, Just because they got so big, it was a little unnecessary. So all right. Now what we're going to do is now since we we have this looking a little better, the rest of this data though is pretty much a table, except it's not a table in the in Excel's terms of a table, right? Where we can then do filters and we can do sorting uh, sorting on certain columns and then do some other things as well, which we'll talk about later uh, today and next week. Uh, so what I want to do now is I want to make this into a table, and so uh, as we, we've seen two ways to do it, and I've I've shown you all. Um, I've shown you all different ways that I like to do this as well. So there is, you can do it from the insert tab. Under the tables group, you can just click table. I prefer to go straight to on the home tab in the styles group, format as a table. Um, that's what I prefer to do. Um, and there's a reason for that. Uh, because I can select this table style automatically off the bat or create one here as well. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to create one. We're going to create a new table style. That's 50 set to switch the styles up. All right. So, um, in the name uh, area here, we're going to name our table style. Let's call it class schedule because that's what we built here a class schedule. Okay. Over here in the previous section, it kind of gives us, hey, this is what this looks like right now. Right now, notice that it has no color changes. It's just white all in the whole background. There's no borders or anything. That's that's just all it is. Um, this is going to be very helpful to look at because as we make changes uh, with the table elements, we'll see them reflected here. Okay. Uh, speaking of which, let's click on first row stripe. Okay, so first row stripe, it knows it says, hey, what's the stripe size? How many rows is the stripe? So we're going to leave it at as a one. Right now, there's nothing changed yet because we haven't formatted it. All we said, we're, it, all, only thing we said was we're going to make a change to the first row stripe. So um, if you think to the other table styles, the first row was a little darker than all the others. Um, if you look back at, I believe it was number two where we were doing the, uh, yeah, it was it was Project 2's 
where we did the table uh, where we sorted with like the bulbs and the trees. Um, you had different, the top one was a, it was a darker color than where the other ones would uh, alternate. It would go to that dark color and then it would go white and then a lighter version of the color and it keep alternating that way. Uh, we're gonna build something that's actually like that here. So we need to format the first row stripe. So I'm gonna click format. And notice we get a we get something similar to format cells. Um, it says format format cells dialog box, but it's missing like the number tab. So it has almost all of the things that are in the format cells dialog box. But these are more tied to what you would actually uh, see change in the table. So I'm gonna click the fill tab because we're not gonna mess with the font because we just did that, right? We just changed the font back to be an office theme, and we don't need to mess with that right now. So I'm going to uh, change the fill color um, to be, let's see, let's go to, go to the second, uh, fourth column, and I'm gonna pick the second color. So the second color in the fourth column. Got right here, click that. I get a preview of what it looks like there. I'm gonna click okay. Hey, look at that. Get our little alternating colors. Okay, so let's just see what happens there. Um, I can check set as default table style for this document because this this document we're working with class schedule, so it makes sense for it to have the class schedule uh, table style that we just created. And then I'm going to click OK. So notice that this didn't become a table though. So all we did here was create that new table style, and there it is. Okay, so um, I'm going to select my table area, uh, which is A2 to P129, but I want to show you all something. If I don't do that, and I were to click this, it's going to estimate, hey, um, the table must be A1 to P129, and my table has headers. Like this title here, that's a great header. Remember, Excel is always trying to help you, but sometimes it's wrong. Um, so in this case, it was wrong, right? It got the title part of it, but it does help me because I don't have to select all that or type it in the name box. I can just do it from here. And does my table have headers? Yes, I have column headers already set up. And click OK. And boom, look at that. It becomes a table, alternating colors on the stripes. And we also um, have our little drop down so we can do filter and sort if we want to so these are looking a lot better here okay um we already had selected the class schedule style but i just want to show you that under the table styles when i hover over it the screen tip actually says class schedule which is exactly what we created to be okay all right so you can save that part And then I can go back to A1. Any questions? Oh, it disappeared. Where'd it go? Okay. I just make sure you guys are still here. Because all the WebEx just disappeared off of my screen. Uh, I don't know what's going on with it doing that, but I know you're here because I can, I could see it still now. So, okay. No question. All right. So, um, let's see. Hmm. All right. So next thing we're gonna do is look at how you can format it, um, some more so that it can be. Um, easily accessible to others, whether we it's because we print it out and give it to someone else, which sometimes is needed for dealing with the schedule. So you need to print it out and be like, hey, look at this. You see all these things I have in yellow? They need to be changed. You see all these things that say staff? They need to be changed. They need help finding people. Uh -huh. So anyway, uh, for this point, what we're going to do is I'm going to go to print preview, go file, and click print. And it gives me a preview to the side. I remember back in the day where there was two options for print and print preview, and we would have to actually select print preview. Um, 
I, I love that they finally fixed it. It was like, well, we just put all the print stuff here instead of having it take over this whole screen. I, I can't believe it took them so long to do so. But anyway, that's what, that's kind of here or there. But looking at this right now, notice that even the title gets split, right? It says schedule classes with, and it just keeps going down. And then at, on page four, we get the other side of it. So clearly this is not print worthy and does not look correct. The other thing is as we move down, after like the, the after you, like the second page, you probably forgot, wait, what was this again? What were the columns that went with this? Oops, I had too much. Um, got too much to yell. I need to go back and change that at some point. But anyway, um, so what do we need to do then to fix this? Well, let's change the view of what we see. Uh, and honestly, when, anytime you go to print, you'll actually notice that you'll get these dotted lines that are separating the pages. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to page rate view. So I'm going to show you two ways to do that. You go to view in the workbook views, you can click page rate view here. In the bottom in the status bar, you can click page uh, break view preview here. And this is the one I usually do. I usually just go there because this clearly shows you how those six pages came to be. And you can see my mistake of when I did the go to blanks. I have a couple other, a couple, couple extra that remain. I'm just going to go and reset these guys. I'm sorry. Uh, what is the orientation that you say it again? What is the orientation? Because like you, at the beginning they say to put you on the portrait. The right. orientation. Uh, now at the beginning, like yeah. when I did, I go. I need to go back on. Uh, so the orientation now I think is a port a landscape. Sorry. And then I need to go to portrait back to portrait. For this one yes so for this one we're got, we're about to change it to landscape we haven't done so yet we haven't we haven't touched oh. the orientation yet oh i go back i don't know i am mean, in a way maybe i mess up okay thank you you're welcome um yeah so yeah we haven't changed it yet so right now it's in portrait um uh, but that does bring up a good point uh what we're going to do now is we are going to change it so um, in the in the instruction I gave you, it tells you to go back to the normal view. Because uh, from the page preview, you see where your breaks are and stuff. Uh, I like to sometimes leave it here until I can see that everything got fixed. But we'll go back and forth just to just to show you. All right, so I'm gonna go back to normal view. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the orientation to landscape. So I went to the page layout tab. You all are familiar with this at this point. Orientation. I'm gonna change the landscape. Notice that there was a line, a, a white line separating here, and now it's here. Uh, and the other one that was closer is gone as well. I'll go to page rate view. Look how things have changed. We now have eight pages. That seems to make it worse. What's going on? Um, well, that's okay. We'll fix that too. So if we go to the still under page layout tab, if we go to the scale to fit group, we can tell it. Um, how how many how many pages need to fit width wise and height wise for this uh, for the data? And so I'm going to change the width so that it all fits on one page width wise. And when I do so, you'll notice that the line that was separating is now gone. If I go to page rate view uh, preview, you can see that it moved over here. There's nothing separating it there. And also, we went from eight pages to now just three. Okay, so we're doing pretty good. We went from six to eight, which looked bad, but then we just went from eight to three by just changing the scale to fit. Okay, so um, the next thing that we want to do is we're going to add our footer, which you guys are used to. So I'm going to go to the page setup dialog box. I'm going to note that that says landscape there. I'm going to go to the header footer section. Then I'm going to customize my footer. And in the left section, as usual, I'm going to put the file name. But I'm going to add something different this time. In the right section, I'm going to put the page number. That's the wrong one. This one. Insert page number. 
And so we have the ampersand with file and ampersand with page here. When I click OK, see I have the file name and I have the number one there. So let me click OK. And I'm going to look at the page break view again. And we got our three pages. Everything's looking pretty decent, right? We could try to fit this all on one page, but it'll be hard to see, right? So this looks nice though. Okay. We can see our blanks clearly with the uh with the yellow. Uh everything fits all one page across lengthwise. So this is pretty good. Um there is gonna be an issue though, right? So let's let's check take a look and see what that issue would be. I'm gonna go to file. Oh, let's look here. I'm gonna go to file, then I'm gonna go to print again so you can see the preview. There's our stuff there. And as I move over, yeah, it's look bad, but oh, I forgot again. What was this stuff? What column goes to what? I forgot again. Uh, it's only the only time it's listed is on this first page. So I forget it by the time I go to the third page. So if only there was some way we could fix that. Hmm. Well, there is. So if something is uh like the titles of a column or column headers or row headers, sometimes you'll want it to repeat as it moves to multiple pages, which makes sense, right? That way you can see what the heck does this actually mean? What does this go to? So to do that, what we're going to do is we are going to change the print title. So you can do that by clicking here or you can do it from the page instead of dialog box. So I'm going to show it from here. It's the sheet tab. Okay, and the only reason I show that is because most people wouldn't make the connection between the sheet tab and print titles because they have different names, right? If I told you to go to header and footer, it's pretty obvious that this is header and footer. If we're dealing stuff with the margins, it's pretty obvious here too, right? Um, but the, the dealing with print titles, you probably wouldn't think, oh, sheet. So that's why I wanted to show that. Print titles is the same as sheet. So I click that, notice it goes to sheet. All right, so under the rows to repeat at the top. Well, what do we want to repeat at the top? We want the column headers to repeat at the top. So I'm going to literally just come over here and select two. So I'm selecting that entire row. Notice when I select two, it puts uh, an absolute reference for two, a colon, and then a two again. So what that says is the rows to repeat at top should be the second row. And it's giving a cell range of, I want the second row all the way to the second row. Um, that's because you could have more rows repeat at top if we really wanted to. We could do like one to two, but we don't want we don't need that for this. We only just need the row that the columns to repeat, column headers to repeat at top so that we know each page what it is that we're referring to. This is a very common practice um, when in working with Excel. Especially when you have tables, have a lot of data. It's very common to have the row, the column headers row repeat at the top. Uh, I'm yes. sorry, sorry. I, I, I lost the the way you put like the page number. The page number? Yes. So I'm gonna go back to header footer. Okay. Header oh. footer. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about this page number, right? Okay. Yeah. So the page number comes from this one. Insert page. Uh, trying to hover over it. You put it. You do the like the insert page first, or you put the 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 uh, the document name. The file, it doesn't matter. Uh, the 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 file name goes in the left section. The page number is going to go in the right section. Yeah. Okay. Which so one? left left will be the 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 name of the document, and the another one will be in the right section. Yes. Oh, now know. I see. So you'll be like. You put it here and then you'll put like the first one page number. Okay. And then you put your one. It'll automatically put the one. Ah, okay. Yes. Yeah. Just like just like you don't have to actually type out the uh you don't have to actually type out the file name. Mm -hmm. You can just click the this guy and it automatically will get um, grab it for you. Same thing mm -hmm. with this. This is automatically grabbing whatever page number you're on for you. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And so did you get the rest of this though? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I just want to make sure because we are we're on print titles. I don't want you to uh, have lost that. Okay. So we got the 
column headers to repeat at the top. Okay, and so now if we click OK here, or if I just click pre preview from here, either way, we clearly see we got our column headers up top, our title, and at the bottom, we even have that page number. As I scroll over to the next one, notice that the page number automatically changed to two. And look at the top here. Our column headers automatically got repeated at the top. Go to the third page here just to check for clarification. We got a three here on page number, and we get the column headers at the top. So looks like everything is good to go now. And so a um, couple of other things that you may want to do with this is maybe this isn't splitting the way you want. Um, this guy is looking pretty good, honestly, to me. But let's just say, for instance, um, this page break had ended up here somewhere. Well, it's cut away from all the other in intermediate algebras. That doesn't really look good. So I, maybe I would slide it down so it would be underneath. That's some other changes you would may want to make just so that like you know data that goes together like all the intermediate algebra stuff you probably want to see it on the same page so you can move these if you want to and we'll see that uh, i think in five the 5b script to lecture I'll, I'll do that definitely but that's something else that you would want to check when you're looking at a document like this before you print it out you would want to make or send it out you want to make sure that these were in the right spot like one you want to make sure they're evenly split which they'll automatically do that for you but two just kind of wanted to make sense to look at. Okay. All right. So um, the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to switch it back to normal view just because it's a little easier to view. Because there's only one more thing that we want to do. So you'll recall um, that we had those staff members that um, said, hey, I want to be the instructor for this class that you have open with no staff member at the moment. So um, if you remember that, we had a separate workbook that we were able to see, right? That had all the information. So uh, one thing that we may want to do is it'd be nice to link those two, link that, link that other workbook to this one some kind of way. Um, in case someone else like that we pass this along to or something happens to me um, as the person that's you know doing the schedule, someone else can go in and very easily take care of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to link these two sheets together by creating a hyperlink. So that way, when someone just clicks on instructors, it will automatically open up the other file so that they can view it. So uh, to do this, I'm first going to select uh, M2. And then you can either press Control-K or if you want to see where it is, you can go to the Insert tab. If you go to the Links group, you'll bring up the insert hyperlink dialog box. Okay. So one thing to notice uh, here, it says, what do you want it to link to? And you have multiple options here. You can have it linked to a existing file or web page. Most time when people think hyperlinks, they think internet. It doesn't have to be. It actually just is, well, even on the internet, it's just uh, linking it to a certain file. That's what that is. And so same thing here, it just going to a certain file. We could make it go to a certain place in this document. That would not be beneficial to us, right? Because the instructor's list is not in the document. Um, create new, new document. You can have it create a brand new uh, workbook or a worksheet. We don't need that. Email address if you wanted it to link out to email someone. Um, in this case, again, once again, we're only interested in um, linking this to another workbook. So I'm going to do existing file or web page. And the one I'm going to select is script, uh, script data three. Oops, I did not mean to do that. Okay. All right. So there's script data three there in the address. And so what it'll do is it'll automatically go when I click on it, it'll, it'll open up. Uh, script data three. Okay. Right. And so the reason I did not want to click OK quite yet was because I want to change some other things. 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna give this a special screen tip too. So that way when people hover over it, they know what it does. They'll, they'll look at them like, hmm, what's this hyperlink for? And they'll hover over it and they'll tell them this. Instead of it giving the file path, I want it to say something else, something that makes more sense. So I'm gonna click screen tip, which is gonna open up the setup of hyperlink screen tip. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in click here for contact information and then I'm going to click OK. Then that's it. There are other things I could do. I could bookmark some areas. I wanted to, I could get rid of the link if something's been established already. I could browse to some other folders if I wanted to. Uh, but this is all set up the way I need to at this moment. I have the text. I got a screen tip that I took care of. I'm connecting it to an existing file. This is the file that is uh, connecting to. I'm going to click OK. Lo and behold, I get that classic color. Oh, that's not the classic color. The classic color is just straight blue. Well, that's OK. Uh, I can make changes to that, too, if I really wanted to. Um, but before we do that, let's take a look at here. If I hover over it, the screen tip says click here for contact information. And if I were to click on this, dun, 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 it opens up that data, uh, data 3 file. And I can see all the instructors' names, their phone numbers, their offices, and their emails, and their statuses. Okay. Because that will probably be very important in this case. Okay. Sherman University. Okay, so now let's see what we're going to do now. Let's go. I'm going to close that and we're going to go back to our main workbook that we were dealing with. I am going to go to the page layout tab though. And there's a reason for this. Because I don't like this color. It's 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 matching the theme color. Uh um sorry, it's matching the table style color. So this lightish uh, greenish blue thing is what it has here. I don't like it though. Um so I'm gonna change it. So what I'm gonna do to change it is I'm gonna go to the page layout tab under the themes group. I'm gonna change the color. I'm gonna click here. And instead of just going and clicking on one of these colors, it's still going to keep it based off the theme, right? So I'm going to I'm going to get I'm going to customize this a little bit because we already picked the color we wanted, but I'm going to customize it for the hyperlink. So when I click on uh, colors and customize colors, I get this create new theme colors. So this is how I can modify the theme colors more directly uh, for different themes. And so which you may have noticed is sometimes it says accent one is this color, accent two is this one. Um, well, this is how that's done. We also can change the hyperlinks. And so right now the hyperlink color is set to that one and the followed after. So once you actually click on it, it changes to this color. We can make those be the same. And a lot of times that's very useful, um, especially, especially when you're, uh, if you have a document and if people click on the hyperlink, you want them to still be able to see it. So sometimes people will set the followed after to be the same color, like that same dark blue that you're used to, so that people don't like lose sight of where it was before. Okay. Um, sometimes the different colors though allow people to know, oh, I did click on that already, but sometimes it's not necessary. Uh, so this is where you would change that. So what we're gonna do is uh your instructions don't actually have you changing this but I'm going to change it because I don't like the color. Um, I'm going to pick something that's just like dark blue. So that's easier for me to see. Like, oh, okay, there's my hyperlink. You don't have to do that. You can leave it how it was. All right. So we already know that this works. Um, and so that's enough for me. There, there's some other instructions that ask you to um, to uh, save the file of the 03 stuff. 
but we don't need to do that here. So uh, that's enough for me there. So I am going to save this though. And if I had changed the hyperlink, if I wanted to change the hyperlink, I could just go back here. I can right click and do edit from here. I could also do it from the uh, insert tab like we saw before. I'm just going to go to edit here. Uh, I could click on a different option if I wanted to. So if I had saved the other one as something different, I would want to make sure the link is still there by changing it to the new file that it was. But everything's good here. Okay. So um, that's honestly everything. The only uh, other things that were part of this project that you'll see in your homework is how to save this as different types of files. So I'm going to demonstrate that here. So I'm going to go to the backstage view. Um, do I have any tags? Before I forget. Okay, I thought I had some tags on here. I guess not. All right. So um, I'm going to go to save as. And then I'm going to browse and put it in the same spot that the other ones are. But I'm going to change the save as type. So right now it's being saved as a workbook. Uh, we already have that version up here. So I'm going to save it as three different or three different options. So under here, which we'll see later, we'll save it as a macro enabled workbook um, in uh, towards the end of the course. But there are other options here. There are tons of different options. Um, actually, is that next week or two weeks from now? When we go to module six, we'll save stuff as a template as well. Uh, but you'll get some practice over the next couple of weeks of saving it as different types of file. Um, but in this point, we're going to save it as three different things. We're going to do a web page, we're going to do a CSV file, and we are also going to do a PDF. And I want you to see what that looks like. So, first one we're going to do is a web page. And so, I'm going to click on web page just right here. There is a one for a single file web page. Uh, we're using a web page. The um, difference between that is one is a web page made from just one file. Another can allow it to have multiple files and for it to be able to go back through them. Um, so, we'll do web page. Um, notice that there's already a solution version of it there, but I'm creating this one. So, a couple things that we can change before we just click OK. We can click change, change title and we can give it a title if we wanted to. I'm going to say, hey, these are my spring courses. And I'm going to click OK. Notice that that is now in the page title right there. All right. Oh, uh, now it says. We have an option to save just the entire workbook as this web page or just the sheet that we're on. We're going to do the entire workbook, uh, even though we only do have we only have one sheet. But that way, if we ever had other type other sheets that we added, they would be there as well. So I'm going to click publish. So when I click publish, some of the uh, if you do it like in Word, um, you may not get any of this extra stuff. I, I tend to not to when I do. Um, but I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, when I try to save by the web page, it don't allow me for some reason. I don't know why to save. Uh, we haven't saved it yet, so you uh, it's you, you have to publish it before you can save. Uh, could I put like a Google search because it said use on the stock Google search something like that? I put like a web page, and then. Uh, and the file name, I don't know. Let's try it again. This... Uh, yeah, when you yeah when you click save as, and the, you change save as type to a web page, uh, you should have it should just be like pretty much what we're doing right now. So changing the page title, and then so, uh, clicking on publish. That that's, that should have been the next step. So how you do like I put like web page, and the, how I do the the, the file name? The, is it, should it be the same the file name? Uh yeah yeah you can leave it the same file name because it's gonna just gonna change the extension yeah and then how I have, I need to put like the title or add a title 
yeah, where it says uh, page title, uh, it'll say change title. If you click on the change title button, you should be able to change it. Okay, change title. Okay, change. And then what you what you do? Do you put what is the name? Uh, I put spring courses. Spring. Yeah, it says uh, right that right here on the page. Spring courses. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then okay. Yep. And, and then, then click then uh make sure that the save uh as is is a uh, is a uh, entire okay. workbook. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then click publish. Okay, publish. Oh, okay. Okay. So your screen looks like mine now. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. So um. Yeah, so uh, it says items to publish. So we have a, a couple of different items. You can say previously published items, the entire workbook, a range of sales, or the items that are on the schedule. Uh, so we're going to just click items on schedule. What that means is not like because we're working on a class schedule. It means things that are scheduled to be published. Okay, so don't don't get that confused as, oh, you know, we were working on a schedule, so this is what this means. No, this is just the things that are on schedule to be published. Um, so. Yeah, so we're going to leave it as uh, items on schedule. And then, um, let's see, make sure the open published web page in browser check is checked. So open published web page in browser is checked. We don't have to have that checked, but what that does is when I click publish um, this next time, uh, what was, what's going to happen is it'll actually open itself up so that we can see it in the web browser, OK? Um, and so I'm going to click Browse. Just to make sure it's going in the correct spot. And I'm going to click OK. And then I am going to click Publish. Does your instructions tell you to change it as something, change the file name? I'm leaving mine as it is. Um, so if you want to change it, you can. This is what I'm, that's how I'm doing mine. So I'm going to click Publish now. And when I do, because I had that uh, checkbox open, it's going to open it. Um, it's going to open it in a web page. And so it opened my web browser for Chrome. Notice that I get a new tab here for Spring Courses. Look at the file, or look at the uh, web address. Notice it says File. Then it has um, the folders and stuff that it saves in. It's in the C drive and the users and SSC downloads and this stuff. But it's, it's going, it's giving the pathway to get to it on the computer. And then here we go. Here's everything. All right. And if I wanted to click here on the hyperlink, mine don't do that. I don't know why. Did you click? Did you click on? Did you click publish? Yes. I did. I don't okay, know why. Did you I have, but did you did you have that checkbox that said open? Um, yeah. Did you have it checked? Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Because when you click publish, it automatically will happen if you actually if you had it checked. So but that's okay. You can go f find the file and mm -hmm. open it that way. Yeah, I don't know. It does something wrong. No, it's fine. So I just yeah. bring up my web, maybe, web file explorer. So look at my file explorer here. Notice how it's here. Even mm -hmm. though I have the page already open, if I wanted to, I could close that. And mm -hmm. my file explorer, I could reopen it again. Mm -hmm. So as long as you saved it as H, if you saved it, then it's there, and you can open it as much as you want. Yeah, my did say, but I don't know why. I cannot He's, find it. I don't know why. Where'd you say? Well, so you want to look to see where you saved it. It should have been in yeah. the same folder as the yeah. rest. I'll try to see to open up the the files. Let's see. Oh, I can find it in here. It's inside the. Um, ah, okay, now it's open.
So you went to the Google Chrome or you went to Microsoft Ad? No, no, I, I just, I went to um, File Explorer and just opened it. Just like a normal file, just just click, double click on it and open it. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then when I did, oh, oh okay, I think, I think I think you get options for your um, browsers, don't you? Yep. Okay, Every yeah, Google. I, yeah, uh, pick whatever one you usually use. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, mine's just set to Chrome. It's just preset, so, but yeah. I, yeah, I can see it right now. I found it. <laughs> Thank you. Go. No, you're welcome. And so what I want to show you all is that though, when you do click on that hyperlink, you do get the screen tip still, or click here for content information. Notice it gave me a download of the file, which I think is hilarious uh, because that file already existed on my folder. But if I go now to my downloads, see by date modified, uh -huh. notice that it actually does create a new version of that file onto my folder because it downloads it. Um, so if I click on that, it actually will download that file that is linked to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that, that's important to note. Um, since you're doing it from the web page. Okay, so um, that's pretty much it with this one. So I'm going to close that. Um, and then let's do another save as. This time I'm going to do it as a CSV file. So I'm going to click my save as type. And I'm going to click on CSV comma delimited. And so I'm going to tell you what that is. So what comma delimited is, is it, what it means is that um, for each one of our cells, it will actually on a, on a single row, it'll put a comma afterwards so that we can, uh, so it, it can denote that, oh, this is how I move from cell to cell. And I believe it does two commas to go to the next line. Uh, I'll show you that though. Um, and so this is a comma delimited and tab delimited uh, are two the two most common ways that people save files. It allows you to save the file in a much smaller way. Um, it also makes it easier for other software to import or import the files because then it knows when it picks it up, it says, oh, this is a CSV file. I know to at each comma to separate it to put it into new cells. So it's an easy way to uh, it's an easy way to code what to, what should be displayed whenever they uh, receive the file. Okay, so if you want to change the name as a structure, you can. I'm going to leave mine um, as it was already set. Uh, and then I'm going to click Save. Sometimes I get an error that says, hey, okay, yeah. Well, this came a different way. But sometimes a pop-up will actually come up that's like, hey, are you sure this is going to change to an SS, uh, a CSV file? You're going to lose the special formatting and stuff that you created. Um, and so, up here, it displayed it differently than you may get on yours. Uh, it says possible data loss. Some features might be lost if you save this work as a CSV format. To preserve these features, save it as an Excel format. Well, I already saved it as Excel beforehand, right? So I should be good to go. And so I'm going to click uh, Save As, just so it's a confirmation that it's there. And that's it. And so this is the CSV file opened in Excel because it was already open in Excel. If I close this, which I'm going to do now, and then I go and open this again. So I'm going to go do that. There's my CSV. I want you to see what it looks like. Because it, remember, I mentioned stuff being lost. Here's all that stuff that we lost. The table style is gone, right? Even how this was merged and centered, that's gone. Look at even the uh, the columns. They're not even spaced the same way as they were before, right? Uh, we can't see all the instructors list. The hyperlink's gone. A lot of information, a lot of data is gone. Uh, a lot of ways, uh, even the formula, this had a formula to calculate the number of unassigned classes. That's gone, right? So all the stuff that we've added on there is now gone because this is purely just data. So I'm gonna open it in another way um, besides opening it in itself. But also let's take a look at this. Look at the size difference. So this is what it was as an Excel file. This was this is what it becomes as an HTML file. Okay, this is what it became as a CSV file. Look at that big difference in memory. So if you just want the data, it makes sense to have the CSV file, right? It's only 12 kilobytes as opposed to 569 kilobytes or even 135 kilobytes. It's um it's more than 10 times less than the HTML file.
it's almost 50 times less than the actual Excel file that we started with. So I'm going to open it, though, in a, uh, a text editor, a simple text editor, such as uh, Notepad. Click on it. I'm going to click right click on it and then open with. You don't have to do this. I'm just showing this to you what it looks like. So in Notepad, I'm going to change the font so that you all can see very clearly. Go down to 14. OK. So this is all that we had. Notice that it has a bunch of commas. These are denoting those extra cells that would happen. So this is just an A1. So B1 is blank, or sorry, uh, yeah, B1 is blank here, and so on and so forth. Look at all that. And it actually puts a new line after prereq, and it goes to the next one, starts over again, commas in between, a new line goes to the next one. So that's our that's what it looks like. Is this hard to read? Honestly, not really, right? If you look up here, you see you got oh, okay, it goes course name, department, section number, course uh, course number, ID number, blah blah blah. I know that this is the course number. The next one's the department. Uh, department. This is the section number. This is the course number. It's still pretty easy to follow, right? So um, that's just something else to keep in mind. We're working with a CSV. It's easy to follow, easy to understand what it's doing, and it's not that confusing in the long run. Okay, so these are used a lot within data analysis because um, it's smaller files that you can use and then easily put into a format that you need to. All right, any there's many softwares that can take these and format it. So, all right, so I said I'm going to close that. You saw what that looked like. I'm going to reopen my Excel file that I had, and we're going to save as one more type. So this time, I'm going to save it as a PDF file. So I'm going to go to File. I'm going to go to Save as Type. But before I do it, I'm going to show you that if you go to Export, you can also do it from here uh, for PDF and XPS. So but I'm going to go to uh, Save As, and this time, I'm going to select from the Save as Type to PDF. Okay. All right, and so this one's pretty um, standard. So um, you get two options. Uh, you can also you have a checkbox here for opening the file after it finishes publishing. I have that there because it's easier for me. And you have these two options. You can either have it set up standard, which means it's going to publish, uh, it's going to allow you to, it's going to publish it so that it can be open online and for printing. If you don't want to do that and you want to save space, most people will actually do this, just publish for online because you can just print from the browser, right? So a lot of people will do that. Um, the standard is better because of how some things are set up in the background when it publishes it to allow it to be printed. So if you were to not do that and then print from the web page, it's going to look different than if you had just printed it from the PDF on its own. It will look a little different. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind. But if you are if you don't care, you just want the data saved somewhere. Minimizing the sign is size is enough. So I'm going to leave it as standard. There are other options here too, uh, like how many pages you want of it. So notice here I can change the page page range. I could change what's actually being published, the active sheet or the entire workbook. Technically, I probably should be selecting the entire workbook, but however, we only have one sheet. So um, and including those tags, this is another reason why it's important to have those tags and other properties that you have. Um, and then this is a, uh, I think this has to do with accessibility compliance. So make it like if you have anything that to, for it to be accessible, like screen tips and stuff. And that's probably something to actually have checked. So I'm not going to do that here because I don't really need to. Uh, but that's how I could make a change to that. So um, like if there's a blind person that was using it or something and there need to be screen tips on the e-reader, this is what I could use. So I'm just going to click OK there. And I'm going to click Save. 
because I had the checkbox for open after publishing open, it should open automatically after it gets done publishing. And for some reason, it's set up in Microsoft Edge on mine as default. But there it is. There's the PDF. It's all nice and stuff. Notice that on each page of the PDF, the column headers repeat. Just like when we printed it out normally, right? The col uh, column headers repeat it because we set it up to do so. And notice we also still get this uh, hyperlink. If I click on it, it still downloads the other version. Or sorry, the other document that it was linked to. So even with the PDF, it'll do that. Okay. So um, that's it with that. That's it with 5A. So are there any questions about 5A? Or, or working with 5A? One thing I will say is that when you submit your uh, assignment for 5A, a lot of times people ask me, oh, how many of the files do you want me to turn in with it? Uh, what does it say here? The Excel file, the PDF file, the CSV file, the web page. So I expect all four. I'm honestly going to be looking mostly at the Excel file. The others, I'm just looking to see, did you turn any off you're supposed to? So is the three? That's four. Okay, the Excel. Excel, the PDF, the mm -hmm. CSV, and the web page. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's like for some reason, mine, like I have the CSV, but I cannot see the, it's not there, you know, at the end of the file. I cannot see CSV like you you have here. Oh, my, my uh, file explorer is set up for that. So. Mine is not. Yeah, no, I'm going to, I'll show you how. So if you have your file explorer open. Uh, and, uh, yes. And you click on the view tab at the top. View, okay, view tab. Over mm -hmm. here in the show hide group, mm -hmm. there's a checkbox for file name extensions. If you have that um, check, okay. No, if you file, have that check, file uh -huh. name extensions. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. if, if you have that checked, it'll show you that on the end of every on the end of every file. Oh, okay. Yeah, but sometimes you don't really need that because you can just look over here at the type column if you have the type column shown. And you can just look in like this one. It says, hey, this is a comma separate, separated value file. So it's a CSV file. So it'll tell mm -hmm. you that here too. So either way, I like to have my file extension shown because then I can very easily and quickly see, hey, there's my CSV file. That's my HTML mm -hmm. file, PDF file, Excel file. So um, why do you have a check? So like mine have like eating checkbox file name extension now hiding items. What is that? What is this about? Okay, so the item check, item checkbox is like so that you can check items, multiple items at one time. Like if you want to open all of them at one time, you mm -hmm. can check them and then like um then open. You could um do some other like if you want to send all of them or um, compress a bunch at one time instead of you doing the select like this where I can hit control and select multiple items, I can just click checkboxes. That's what the item checkbox one with us. Mm -hmm. um, I don't use that because I don't have a real need to. And a lot of times um, I personally have had issues when when it's been uh, already active on my computer when I'm trying to uh, open certain files. So I just got, I just took it off. I was like, I don't want to deal with that. Mm -hmm. um, file name extensions. I keep it on again so that I can easily see what these are. If it's off, then that's not visible anymore. So I only can know from the icons and from the type here. But I yeah, I can recognize it, but I'm just I'm just used to being able to quickly see it from here. Because mm -hmm. the other thing is like look at the look at the CSV file. It has a symbol that looks like Excel. It looks very close to it. So if someone didn't know the difference, they may think, oh, this should just be a normal Excel file. It's not it's a CSV file. So um, having this here, if I tell someone, hey, go open the CSV, fi CSV file version of it, they're going to be probably looking over here. If that wasn't there, they'd be like, well, which one is it? Mm -hmm. So I've actually had that happen before with someone I told to do something for me. Um, so this just makes it easier to look at. Um, yeah. the, hidden, the hidden items, 
you probably, well, I won't say you probably would never use it, but you might never ever use in reality. So um, I don't want to show you what those look like on here. I don't have any hidden items in this folder. Um, but some of your items will, like if you have that check, some of your stuff will show up and look kind of grayed out. So there's like, a, there are extra folders. Uh, actually, maybe I just put this. So uh, I don't know if you can tell right now, but this guy is grayed out. The program data one is grayed out. Um, mm -hmm. The Adobe temp is also grayed out. Uh, it may be kind of hard to tell from, from the video screen, uh, but it is grayed out. Those are hidden items. Um, if I were to uncheck, they disappear because they're hidden. Because mm -hmm. you you shouldn't be really using it unless you're a, a, a they say super user. That's not the term I really want to look at. But if you have an understanding of what's going on in there, then it could be useful to you. Uh, another thing is like the let's see, uh, some temp folders. So like app data. So sometimes when but before the download folder existed, um, most of the time people download this stuff, and sometimes still on your computer it'll do this. It'll go to a temp folder in the app data um, location. And so sometimes people need to go there to see, oh, I downloaded something today before it gets wiped from uh, wiped from your short-term memory. Uh, this is where it is. And so sometimes people like to have things or like to know that how to get there. And if it's hidden, it's hard to see. You have to know what the path is and like mem memorize it in your mind. This way it's not hidden. So I can just double click through it to find it or I can click through to find it. Um, so that's why I have that check. So mm -hmm. yeah. Again, that's not something that you all may want to ever use in your own life. Just, just, just being honest. Um, it could be useful though. If you ever download something, you're like, I can't find it in downloads. It's probably in the app data um, folder. So you would have to go to your users and go to your user. And then if you went to app data, local, then you can find out where it was that you downloaded usually here. Mm -hmm. So, um, in the tip folder is usually where it goes to. And so, yeah. like, most of the stuff you probably be like, "What is all this?" But it's just different temporary files and logs. Um, yeah. So, okay, but yeah, going too far. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, will use, I will use save again because uh, I don't have this this CVS. This is uh, easier to find the file. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. We have about 10 minutes left, so we could start 5B, but I think that I think that we uh, had enough at, at this point in time. Um, so I will send out five. Oh, wow. It's the end of the week already. Okay. So, yeah. So Tuesday, I'll send out the 5 B scripture lecture, and then we'll be about half a week ahead, uh, which is still good. Uh, we'll probably catch up or be ahead again by a lot after next week, to be honest, because uh, we'll probably do 5B on Tuesday, and then Thursday we'll probably do 5G. Um, that's what I imagine. So, um, but you guys probably have a good head start. Um, so take your time and yeah, enjoy your weekend. I'm gonna stop recording now if I could get this guy to show up. Um, yeah.